When dealing with the concept of the mole, we're going to need to remember where to write it. The mole is a unit and it's just never written down, which is what makes it kind of confusing. But the mole is a quantity. It's that gigantic number, 6 times 10 to the 23rd. So a quantity is, is just an amount. So anytime we have a numerical ratio in chemistry, we could write uh, that ratio in terms of moles. For example, anytime we have an ionic compound, or any compound for that matter, the formula is a ratio. So this is one atom of sodium to one atom of chlorine. So when we did the naming, and we did this in chapter five, we wrote that that was just a one to one ratio. We could say there's one mole of sodium for every one mole of chlorine atoms. So we could insert the word mole there. For magnesium chloride, we could say there's one mole of magnesiums for every two moles of chloride ions. This is um, an example of where we can write the mole. It's just not common. A very common example where we are going to need to remember to write the word mole is in a balanced equation. This is also a numerical ratio. There's four irons for every three molecules of oxygen to make two uh, Fe2O3 compounds. So here's where we want to make sure, and it's a good idea to actually rewrite the balanced equation in terms of moles. So there's four moles of iron and three moles of oxygen, and we make two moles of Fe2O3. So remember, the balanced equation ends up being like a recipe. So when we make something, or even when we're looking at an equation written down as though we were going to prepare something, the recipe is always in moles. So if we, we either need to remember that, or it's an even better idea to actually write that down. So we'll use this to convert, for example, from iron to O2, or from iron to Fe2O3. So just like all recipes, we can use any uh, a multiple of this. We could have 8, 6, and 4, or we could cut this down by 2. So have 2 moles, 1 and a half moles, and 1 mole. And so we're going to ratio any two formulas together in order to obtain information about one uh, item from another. Another common way that we're going to use the mole is in the molar mass. So it's a very good idea to know this definition. This is the mass in grams. That's very important. The mass is in grams of one mole of anything. So here is where we're going to use the periodic table. And depending on the formula, we're going to calculate the molar mass. So we could do this for water, H2O. We have two moles of H, or just two H atoms, and one O. So we're going to look on the periodic table and find hydrogen. And it's, oh, that's not where the number's going to be. On our periodic table, the mass is going to be at the bottom. So 1.008. And then if we look at oxygen, element number 8, we're going to see this number down here. So that number is the atomic mass, and this is really in grams per one mole. So we're going to practice calculating 
the molar mass of any atom or compound simply by using this mass that's listed on the periodic table. So we'll do that on the next slide.